Now you may have noticed I've had somewhat of an increased interest in bike sims as of late. This isn't the first time, but every few months or especially after the TT the past few years, I've wanted to jump in and try a little bit for myself. But with bike sims, the question always is, how do you control them? Riding a bike is very different than driving a car. I think the only thing that might come close is driving a go-kart, but riding a bike is so physical. Never mind the controls are completely different than driving a car. The default answer for years and for most folks is just an Xbox controller or any kind of PlayStation, Xbox, just gamepad. All the different games and sims out there are tuned to work with one of these. And for a lot of folks that works perfectly fine and there are some terrific and very talented sim bike racers out there that use a controller to do everything. But just using your thumbs and fingers to move the bike isn't the most realistic and there really isn't anything out there that's affordable that you could buy like we can with all of the, the driving gear that we have. Unless you're willing to fork over a lot of money and have a lot of extra space. So I, like maybe some of you, was curious if I could take advantage of some of this gear that I have to do regular sim racing and make the bike experience a little bit better. I'll get the quick disclaimer out of the way. I don't drive motorcycles in real life. I don't race motorcycles. So this is purely about having fun playing these different games and making it feel a bit more realistic, a bit easier to control. Knowing that already a controller isn't like riding a bike, can I at least make it fun and maybe even a bit easier to control the bikes in some of these games? So let's talk through the controls. I'm here in GP Bikes. This is a really cool motorcycle simulator, but I want to talk through this with a few different sims. I've been playing GP Bikes here just a little bit, but also Ride and uh, MotoGP by Milestone, which are fantastic games, as well as, of course, the TT game. And the great thing about this is the controls work in all of those games, and I'm sure many more. So I've been jumping back and forth and just enjoying what's out there for motorcycle games. And so I'm sat in my racing rig, of course, but everything about this is completely different than driving a car. The steering wheel itself is our main control but it does not control the steering of the bike it's actually going to control our riders lean and one of the most important settings to do with your wheel is to set it to a small degrees of rotation so the wheel itself only goes from there to there so it's a really really small degree of rotation but like I said this will control the riders lean so it doesn't although you can see the handlebars moving on the bike in the sim it's actually going to control how our rider leans over the bike and as we ride I'll explain it a little bit more but having this short degree of rotation will line up almost perfectly with how far the bike itself is leaning and in my opinion becomes very very intuitive to help you control so then we come to two of the most important controls, of course, throttle and brake. And no, I won't be using my pedals for that. I'll actually be using these paddles that are underneath the wheel. Now this is a part of Fanatec's advanced paddle module. Uh, and the really important thing with this is these are nice and smooth analog paddles. So they're not a click like the shifting paddles would be, but actually a nice smooth uh, linear motion that you can map to just about anything. I think they're meant to be clutch paddles. Uh, so if you're driving a formula car, you would have one on each side of the wheel to release clutches in a modern car like that. But since in a motorcycle, the throttle itself is on the right grip, I found it best to actually have the throttle right on the right side and use that paddle instead of the pedal itself. It gives you really fine control over the throttle and also lets you do really quick on and off if you need to, which sometimes you do on a bike. Now Fanatec sells these paddles, the advanced paddles, and you can install them on a lot of different wheels that they have. But obviously this is going to be one of the bigger barriers to entry for a lot of folks out there. The cheapest wheel that Fanatec sells that has these paddles on it or has analog paddles would be the McLaren GT3 wheel, which I think runs for about 200 bucks right now. So if you do have Fanatec stuff but don't have a formula wheel at all, that would probably be the cheapest way to get into it. I don't know what Thrustmaster has for stuff or any of the other makes, but I really do think they add a lot to the immersion. If you're going to be doing a lot of bike stuff or you're a bike person, it might be worth it in the end. So on the right side here, I've got my throttle paddle. So this will be how we control the throttle. And then on the other side of the wheel, if you can see it here, this is actually going to be the front brake. And of course, on a bike, you actually have two different brakes. You've got your front brakes, which really are the primary brakes for slowing and getting the bike into a turn. But then you also have a rear brake. And in real life, this rear brake is operated with your, your right foot. And so to keep things as close to we can as real life, I've got the, the rear brake set up on the right foot as well. So what would usually be my accelerator is actually the rear brake, so pressing that will engage it. And it's not something you use everywhere, it's probably the thing I use the least. I've heard that some real riders don't actually use it at all. But it can really help balance the bike into corners and uh, get it to turn in just a little bit more if, if you're missing the apex. The trickiest part is remembering that your right foot's actually doing a brake. But then that brings us to our other foot, and what would usually be the clutch pedal is actually the downshift. 
So I've got the clutch pedal set up, so just as you move it, it's actually going to shift the gears down as you go into a corner. So you're still using your feet quite a lot, but it's a completely different way than usual. And not far off how a lot of bikes are. Now I think this MV Agusta here, the pedals are actually the opposite, but on a lot of bikes, the left pedal is going to be your downshift and upshift, and your right pedal is going to be the rear brake. So then lastly, out of the major controls would be the upshift itself. And I've got that mapped to the right paddle. I think on most bikes you would use your left foot to actually do the upshifts and the downshifts depending on the direction you're going. And there's no way to do that here. So I've got the right paddle, the normal upshift paddle set up to do uh, my shifts. So we'll go for a quick ride here and I'll explain a bit of how this works. Now GP bikes is definitely the most sophisticated bike game I've played and it's the only one where you really have to use the clutch or should. The milestone games, the TT game, the clutch uh, isn't modeled quite the same way. But I do have that map to my, my thumb here which is the most efficient. Maybe you would change that at some point. But we'll go away and I'm in third person view right now. So I'll roll away from the end of the pit lane there. Third person view right now just to show you how this works. So the big concept to get your mind around is that the wheel controls the lean of the rider. So as we go into the corner, we just move the wheel to lean. At first it feels a lot the same, like you're steering the bike, but the handlebars are doing something completely different and we're not really controlling those. The sim itself, the different games, will control your actual handlebars. They'll often be counter steering away from the corner, but we're actually controlling the lean of the rider and I really think about the rear tire as, as what I'm controlling. Uh, the front of the bike's gonna go wherever we tell it to, but that rear tire, that's really what we're, we're pivoting around with the rider. So we're controlling the weight. As we come up to a corner, and especially as we gain some speed, we'll lean the bike and try to get a nice lean angle. There's a lot of difference in, in riding a motorcycle than racing a car, especially in your lines and where you brake, and it takes a while to learn, but a wheel like this makes it so much more smooth and easy to control that weight so we'll get into the corner and you can see we can just keep it there, turned in, the rider will lean and get us through the turn like that. It's so much easier and precise to control I think with the wheel than with, with a thumbstick, at least for myself, that it makes a world of difference. And the short rotation on the wheel really helps as we come up here to the corkscrew and hopefully I won't fall. We'll downshift, I'll hit my uh, left foot in, brake a bit with the left paddle and then get it down the corkscrew there nice and slow. Try not to dump my rider off the bike. I'll jump into first person cam because this is where I'm often playing these and this is where things I feel like get so immersive in bike sims. And uh, it's a bit disorienting at first. I saw a few of those comments on the TT video I did about how, you know, it's a little tough to keep track of, but it's really what the rider's head is doing. And uh, couple that with, with controlling something with both your hands like a wheel, you can kind of lose yourself into feeling like you're holding on to the handlebars at least a little bit. I'll pick up the speed here. All right, we'll come down to T1 here. Quite a lot more speed. I've done a couple of laps. We'll get it down the gears. I'm gonna run really wide here. Just lean the bike over. Miss both the apexes, it's all right. Nice and easy on the throttle. You have to really anticipate the corners quite a lot because again, you're controlling that leaning of the rider, leaning of the bike itself, the weight shifting. So it almost feels like there's a big delay in the steering, but it's consistent. So it takes a lot to get used to because you have to turn quite a bit earlier than you would have to turn with a car. Get it out, I think I'm maxed out in gears there. You have to turn a lot earlier as so the bike gets all wobbly there. But once you do get the turn settled in or you figure out where you'd have to pivot the bike to actually get it to turn in, it stays consistent so you can really learn that delay or what could be perceived as a delay and, uh, and not do what I'm doing and miss all the apexes everywhere. But it becomes so intuitive that uh, it, it just really makes these sims come alive. We'll come up to the corkscrew here and see if I can manage to get through without falling. This little bike gets quite tricky slow. rocket down the hill. It's so exhilarating playing in first person. I, I very much enjoy it, especially on some of the road circuits. But even around somewhere like this or any of the MotoGP tracks, it's uh, it's still a lot of fun to scrape <laughs> right against the pavement as you go through the corners.
So there's one more main control, a lot of other little things you could dial in obviously, but one more main control and that is your rider's position, forward and backwards. Now, the main one that I've been using and using all the different games and sims is the tucking position. When you're going in a straight line, your body obviously creates a lot of wind resistance. So I actually have this mapped to my left paddle, which would normally be the downshift, but that will tuck me into the bike as the rider to uh, help with, with wind resistance, but it also changes your weight in all of the different sims, changes your weight over the bike. Uh, and it can help you out of certain situations. It can help you get into certain situations if you're not careful with it. But I usually am using this as I'm exiting corners to help pull in Ooh, and try not to fall off the bike again there. But anytime you're going in a straight line, obviously we'll get through this corner here to the right, tuck in. And this is your position for maximum speed. So I've got that left downshift paddle just pulled in whenever I'm in the tuck. And I found that to be the most natural for me to help control this. Come out of it in the braking zone, get the body in the air to help slow the bike down. And then as we pick up some speed, jump back in the tuck to uh, make sure we don't have any wind resistance. Now, as I promised, this isn't just something that you can do with GP Bikes. GP Bikes is the only one that I've been playing that you can map your controls directly to. So it's very easy. The force feedback and everything is really nice. But for everything else, for MotoGP 23, for Ride 4 and 5 that's coming out soon, or for the TT game, and I'm sure many else out there, they only work with an Xbox 360 controller. And that's where Xbox 360 controller emulator comes in. So this is a really small program known as X360CE for short, that all it does is emulate a 360 controller and let you set up whatever devices that you want to press the different buttons on the controller. So you can see in the center is our Xbox 360 controller. And if I move my wheel left to right, I'm actually moving that left thumbstick left to right. So I've got it mapped up with my axis for my wheel to do left to right. For my throttle, I'm doing the trigger in the top right. With my, my front brake, I'm doing my trigger on the left side. For my downshifts using my pedal, I've got that mapped to the A button, my uh, rear brakes to the B button. So everything that I'm using and was using, the tuck buttons also there on the bumper, I've set up to use all the different buttons on the controller. I'm not gonna go in depth on how to set up this little emulator itself. It's fairly straightforward. But luckily all these different games do allow you to change the mapping of the controller buttons in the game. So you can set up the emulator with all your different controllers and buttons, get that set to be able to move all those controls. And then in the game itself, you'll be able to control your bike with the same setup. From there, it's just a lot of practice and coming to the realization that controlling a bike is so much different from racing a car. It's a sobering experience trying to get around the track knowing it's not necessarily the controls that are standing in your way and it's just your own ability. It took me quite a while just to understand how different bikes corner and have to brake and manage everything. It was frustrating at times and other times very exciting when you get it right. It's a completely different experience though and it's so refreshing to do some bike racing across all these different games. And as you can see by some of the footage, I still have a little ways to go in practicing. I find some of the sims easier to control than the others, but using that Xbox 360 emulator, I'm able to get the wheel and the pedals and set up exactly the same as I did for GP Bikes and Ride 4 and MotoGP 23 and the TT sim. So it's helped build some muscle memory as I go from sim to sim and, and be able to do the same thing across each of them. For what it's worth, and perhaps because I've spent the most time in it, the TT Sim is the most controllable I've found. It doesn't have the same kind of force feedback that GP Bikes does. GP Bikes definitely has the best force feedback. It's really the only one with force feedback, but through that Xbox 360 emulator, you can get some of the rumble effects and things. So as you hit curbs or shift gears, you can feel that through the wheel, which is very nice. But perhaps because the TT game, I've read or heard that it does have simplified physics, it does feel the easiest to control out of all of them. But MotoGP is really fun. It's fun to get on the throttle. You can feel the bike slide as it goes through the corners or just grip up enough. You have to really balance the throttle control as you go through. And Ride 4 is an absolute blast. If you like, it reminds me a bit of Forza. Uh, maybe a more serious Forza, like Forza Motorsport, but with the car collecting part of it, because there's every bike that you could imagine, and, and then some. So for somebody that's getting interested in bikes, or hasn't really experienced a lot of it, you can just 
kind of race and collect very Gran Turismo style motorcycles and things. And Ride 5 is not far off in the future, I don't know. A lot of folks are excited for that, including myself. So as I said at the beginning of this, I do not claim that this is the most realistic thing you could have. Of course, if you were able to afford one of those crazy ride-on simulators and had the space for it, that would probably be more realistic. But for most of us that do sim racing, I think this is a nice middle ground and it, it doesn't feel like anything in the controls is stopping me from, from enjoying these games anymore. So let me know if you have any tweaks or things that you suggest or if there's other ways that you've learned how to control these games. At the end of the day, they're just a lot of fun. So if you're burnt out a bit on sim racing or just looking for something new to do, pick up a bike sim. You don't have to go learn the TT. There's plenty of other stuff out there, but it's a really good time. So that's it for this one. I'm going to get back out there and enjoy a bit more of this two-wheeled madness. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again next time.